welcome back to the channel and this video will be discussing about enzymes under biochemical and bioprocess engineering so this unit will be a long one so uh, let's just start with the first unit of enzymes so talk about enzymes uh, like what are enzymes so i hope you have studied in your uh, junior classes of like enzymes and proteins and different, uh, different sort of things so we'll uh, study about those things only today uh, in a bit broader manner so let's just talk about enzymes which are usually proteins of higher molecular weight which can be around less around 15000 to several million daltons uh, uh, this unit is dalton remember that uh, it is always measured or weighted in daltons so these uh, proteins are usually pro uh, enzymes are usually proteins of higher molecular weight that acts as catalysts all right also RNA molecules and uh, or RNA molecules that have high catalytic properties are called ribozymes. All right, so this is some facts that you need that you might remember that may come in your MCQ or some exams. All right, so RNA molecules that have catalytic properties or that have protein properties or that act as an enzyme are known as ribozymes. All right, uh, next point is enzymes are namely uh, named uh, named by adding the suffix uh, ASE to the end of the substrate such as UDAs or the reaction catalyzed such as uh, alcohol dehydrogenase all right so always whenever we name an enzyme or whenever we uh, make a new enzyme so we name it as by uh, adding a suffix which is ASE such as uh, we have it here like alcohol, alcohol dehydrogenase all right and there are many uh, enzymes such as UDAs uh, and many other will study today all right so they are they are all uh, they are another factor which is the cofactor which is also required such as metallic iron ions such as mg zn mn fe or coenzymes such as uh, such as a complex organic molecule such as nad fad coa or some vitamins all right so these are some of the important factors that uh, constitute enzymes all right so enzymes are basically protein that acts as catalysts and rna enzymes or protein molecules are known as ribozymes also enzymes are named by adding the suffix um, ase and these enzymes have cofactors which are mainly metallic ions which can be magnesium zinc zinc manganese iron or a coenzyme such as complex organic molecules which can be nad fad uh, coa so these can be like many of it also an enzyme containing a non-protein group is called a haloenzyme all right so these are some of the facts related to proteins i mean enzymes so enzyme containing a non-protein group is called a haloenzyme also the protein part of this enzyme is called a apoenzyme so the protein part is called apoenzyme and a non-protein part is called a haloenzyme so i'm talking about a holoenzyme uh, which is uh, uh, I'm sorry, which is uh, this is also called a holoenzyme. Sorry for the pronunciation. And this is uh, so the holoenzyme consists of a apoenzyme plus a cofactor. All right. So uh, definitely, this is something that you need to that you might feel to remember it. So the protein part of the enzyme is called apoenzyme, and a an enzyme that uh, containing a non-protein group is called a holoenzyme. So holoenzyme equals to uh, apoenzyme plus cofactor also the enzymes that occur in several different molecular forms but catalyze the same reaction is called the isozymes so isozymes are many uh, we must we will be going through about isozymes also so enzymes that occur in several different molecular forms but catalyze the same reaction are called isoenzymes so moving on with this so i have got you a classification for all of the types of different sorts of enzymes so one can be oxidoreductase so it carries out oxygen reduction or reduction reactions all right so these are some of it so these are acting on co group cch group cnh2 group cnh group so these are oxidoreductases and we have transferases which transfer which carries transfer of uh, functional group so which is mainly involved with the transfer of functional group which can be one carbon groups aldehyde or ketonic groups acyl groups glycosyl group phosphate groups 
sulfur containing groups so the third category which can be hydrolases so hydrolases are esters glycosidic bonds peptide bonds other cn bonds the fourth type is lyases uh, which is the addition to double bonds okay so this is prevalent prevalent only for double bonds which is cc bonds co bonds cn bonds the fifth type is isomerases we'll be talking about isomerases a lot uh, it's because it's a very important enzyme and carries uh, carries uh, reactions such as isomerization uh, which can be classified as resmerases so this is one kind of isomerase and the last uh, type we have is ligases which is which involved in the ligation or joining of uh, lot, lot many ends and these also help in the formation of bonds with atp cleavage which can be co c s c n c c so these are six types of classifications uh, based on the names uh, numbers types of reaction catalyzed so moving on with uh, we have this very important slide which is the lock and key model uh, you may might have studied in your junior classes about this so let's just talk about enzyme catalyzed reaction so this is the substrate as you can see all right so this is the substrate and this is the enzyme this is the enzyme this is the this upper part of the substrate and the joining part or the end part of the enzyme is the active side so the substrate joint binds to the enzyme on its active side as you can see here so the enzyme changes shape slightly as the substrate binds definitely so as the substrate binds to the active side of an enzyme so it might change a uh, minor change uh, it might have minor changes in shape for accommodating the substrate so as the substrate gets binded to the enzyme as you can see here so this is this forms an uh, enzyme product complex all right so as enzyme substrate formed in complex it leads to the formation of product right as the substrate binds to the enzyme as you can see this leads to formation of enzyme substrate complex so it later forms to the formation of products all right so enzyme plus substrate leads to the formation of product so as you can see now we have the enzyme product complex so as these products are released as you can see so these products leaving the active side of enzymes all right so this is the basic lock and key model that we have so let's say this substrate is hydrogen peroxide so this substrate is hydrogen peroxide and this enzyme is peroxidase all right so when hydrogen peroxide uh, peroxide uh, binds to the active side of peroxidase it leads to the formation of water and oxygen as you can see so the, when this substrate binds to this enzyme all right so leads to the formation of product so in this case when hydrogen peroxide binds to the active side of peroxidase it leads to the formation of water and oxygen which later gets released from the enzyme as you can see here so the activation energy of the uncatalyzed reaction at 20 degrees is 18 kilocalories per mole so these are some of the important facts that you may remember so the activation energy of an uncatalyzed reaction at 20 degrees is 18 kilocalories per mole whereas the activation energy values for chemically catalyzed and enzymatically enzymatically catalyzed uh, decompositions are 13 and 7 kilocalorie per mole respectively so it's less for uh, catalyzed reactions as compared to uncatalyzed reactions as you can see so moving on with so this is the basic uh, curve that we have this is a universal curve that we follow so this is the this y axis is for energy or the free energy and this is the reaction progress or reaction status all right so as we start the reaction from here as the reactions uh, reaction reactants are in initial state so this is these are two graphs for the one is for uncatalyzed and this is for catalyzed all right so as you can see uh, this is g this is the uh free energy of activation so the initial reactants in its initial stage move upwards to the free energy of activation and slowly degrade whereas in this case the reactants start from the same point whereas the free energy is very less in this case and leads to the formation of product very quickly rather than this part rather than the uncatalyzed part so the uncatalyzed part leads to the formation of product 
very slowly as compared to catalyzed thing. As you can see, it leads to a formation product very quickly with a very small curve or hinge of free energy of activation as compared to the non-catalyzed one. So the activation energy of enzymatically catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction comparisons. So it shows the comparison between the two and it shows that the uh, free energy of activation of A2 which is this one, the catalyzed one is more than the free energy of activation of this one, uncatalyzed one. So moving on, so let's talk about the lock and key model that we have here. So talking about this lock and key model, so this interaction between the enzyme and its substrate is usually by weak forces uh, which can be randable forces, hydrogen bondings, all right. So we just talked about uh, the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and peroxidase, so which is also example for lock and key. So this is, uh, we'll study in this uh, in a broader sense. So basically these are held by weaker forces which can be hydrogen bonding or variable forces and the substrate binds to the specific side of an enzyme side which is known as the active side. So these enzymes have an active side. Let's say this is the active side. So the substrate binds to the active side as you can see. Here is it. So the multiple substrate enzyme catalyzed reactions enzymes can hold substrate that are uh, that uh, such that reactive regions of substrates are close to each other and to the enzymes active site which is the proximity effect. So the closer the substrate is to the enzyme, uh, the faster they bind to each other. So that is the proximity region they have between the two, which helps in binding or attaching between the two, which causes the attachment between the two. Also enzymes may hold the substrate at certain positions and angles to improve the reaction rate, which is orientation effect. So this is another important point. So these two are important uh, points such as proximity effect and orientation effect. So proximity effect is the distance between the two and orientation is the angles or positions between the two so that the reaction can occur in its best possible way. So these two are important things that you might uh, uh, know should uh, it might come in exams or somewhere in modern regions. So let's just keep this video till here. Uh, thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more.